Alaska, America's last frontier, and home to Sarah Palin. She came from nowhere, from small town mayor to possible presidential candidate within a handful of years. She credits Alaska with its rugged landscape and lifestyle for giving her the toughness that's brought her so far. So we've come here to ask Sarah Palin herself and the people who know her best. Will she run and can she win? Enter a race to win the race. So there's still a lot of considerations that have to be made. As a mother, I have concerns. Uh, her safety and that of the kids. She can fill a 50,000 person stadium, fill it up. Defeat the Obama agenda however you can. She just can't be in charge. Sarah Palin's stratospheric rise has been unprecedented. As the youngest ever state governor in Alaska, she enjoyed 90% approval ratings with her much vaunted bipartisan approach. But she turned Republican attack dog after being chosen as John McCain's running mate in 2008, a role she's reveled in ever since. Alaskans pride themselves on not just surviving, but thriving in one of the fiercest environments in the world. And for those here who find the living is easy, there's always the Iron Dog. It's a 2,000 mile race across Alaska on snow machines. Dangerous terrain and temperatures at times as low as minus 50 Celsius mean the main aim is to make it safely back home. Sarah Palin's husband, Todd, known as the first dude when she was Alaskan governor, is a veteran. I'm in it to win, so I'm not in it to take second. Do you want to win this? Oh, yeah. Although there's no sign of Sarah Palin, the rest of the family are out in force. Chuck, Sarah's dad, wouldn't miss it. Does it say anything about Alaska, Alaskan people, the, the, the strength, the, the sturdiness? I don't know if we're tough or we're stupid, but <laughs> we have a good time. One or the other? Yeah. Probably a combination a of both, yeah. No, we, uh, it's just a, a different way of life up here, yeah. If you don't like the winter, you don't like the cold, you shouldn't be here. The Iron Dog is one of the yeah. biggest events in the Alaskan calendar, and Todd Palin has won it four times. But the big race the rest of the world is interested in is the presidential race, and where the Sarah Palin will be in the starting lineup. When Sarah Palin does arrive, today, it's with no security and no entourage. So we take our chance to talk. Governor Palin, hi, I'm Jackie from BBC in London. How are you? I'm good, how are you? Excellent, excellent today. This is one of our favorite days of the year. I'm struggling with the cold, I can hardly speak. All right, do you have layers on? Do you have enough layers? Okay, good. Tell me about the race, and you tell me about why it's so important. It's pretty uniquely Alaskan, you know, 2,000 miles across the... Come here, come here. Rugged conditions. Yeah, shake your hand and say hello. God bless you. God bless you. Right, safe, right, hard. Um, uniquely Alaskan. This is awesome. And it, uh, you know, a lot of us living sort of vicariously through the Iron Doggers. So many of us would love to be tough enough to do what they're doing. Now he's racing to win quite clearly. Presumably you don't want him to lose either. You don't do losing. Um, you run the race to win. That's for sure. And can I just ask you, of course, the big race everyone is interested in outside of the Iron Dog is the presidential race. And what are your thoughts on that? Are you going to run? Well, there again, you enter a race to win the race. So there's still a lot of considerations that have to be made. We haven't uh, made up our mind or, or desired to make an announcement yet as to what it is that we'll be doing. And you know, what, what are the considerations at the moment? What are the things that you're weighing up? Well, understanding that Obama has already said, you know, he's going to he's gonna rake in and spend a billion dollars in this race. Money certainly is going to be a consideration. And then um, just the idea of, uh, will the American electorate be ready for uh, someone a bit unconventional in terms of a candidate who will call it like she sees it and who will not be beholden to special interests or such obsessive partisanship as to let a political machine get in the way of just doing what's right for the voters. So in a sense, do you think that your sort of unconventionality in that sense, the fact that you tell it as it is, is your strength, but is also perceived as a weakness as well? Well, in 
it is, I believe that it is a strength because I certainly encourage my kids, I encourage everyone I know that whether it be in their workplace, whether it be in their, um, in a political arena or within their own families, to do what their gut tells them to do. And, and that involves calling it like they see it and um, uh, tackling the tasks that are at hand and not worrying so much about what other people are thinking or saying about them. And a lot of that goes along with that unconventional vein that I'm talking about, that independent vein that I have with you. So I think it's a strength and I encourage other people to exercise that strength too. Trying to get a clear sense of who Sarah Palin is and what she wants is difficult. Her personal image and political history are riven with contradictions. Can she still be the small town hockey mum? Now she's a celebrity millionaire. Is she the pro-business conservative who screamed drill baby drill at the oil companies? Or the populist governor who hit the industry with a big tax hike? She calls herself a fighter, but she quit the governor's post early. And it's contradictions like these, according to her critics, which explain why many Alaskans fell out of love with her some time ago. Is it mush or mush? What? Is it mush or mush, I'm supposed to say? Well, not, you don't say mush. For, that's the dog sweat. Okay. It's just some machines. Okay. Bob Lester takes me for a drive, Alaskan style. He's half of the Bob and Mark radio show, and Sarah Palin is often a guest. I sure do wish that people would just believe in truth and tell the truth, and then we could all... Uh, uh, be a bit more productive and not waste time in this world. Well, amen, amen to that. And, and one last question, we'll let you go. Are you running for president? <laughs> I told you guys you'd be the first to know. Despite her success, to them, she's still Sarah from Wasilla. She has an, uh, the ability, I think, to talk to the common man uh, and woman on a level that we can understand. You know, for the longest time, it seemed to be big oil ran things and they were very arrogant about it and there was a good old boys they called themselves the corrupt bastards club i mean they actually had hats made that said cbc they were proud of it yeah uh and she they went in, it. Yeah, yeah and she went in there and broke it up she's able to bridge that gap between an elitist and most of us in america and that's one of the attractions but why do you think she attracts so much criticism she's got this it factor that they just can't get a hold of they just don't know what it is, and it scares the crap out of them. And we're back, hour number three of the Thursday edition of the Dave Steeren radio program. But Dave Steeren, another conservative talk show host, says he understands Sarah Palin only too well. She was a hands-off, I don't really want to get involved in doing stuff governor. He's horrified by the prospect of her running for president. He recognizes her power, but says she's simply not a credible candidate. She shows up on a stage for 20, 30 minutes, throws a few you betches out there about how we're moving America forward, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that's crowd talk. Crowds like to sit there and be all riled up, and they don't care about details. You know, maybe the problem isn't the Republican Party. Maybe the problem is most Americans don't want to know the plan. They, they're not detailed people. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Back in Wasilla, and these are the people Sarah Palin needs to reach. They're the Conservative Patriots group, effectively the town's Tea Party supporters. Alaskans receive more federal money per head than anywhere else in the country, yet Palin's mantra of God, guns and small government makes perfect sense here. One of the big problems facing America is the deficit. Do you think the government is going about cutting it in the right way? <laughs> It's one of my best lines. You can't spend your way out of a deficit. If you don't have the money, you certainly cannot spend it. But the reality is that Alaska has done well out of federal dollars, hasn't it? It's had a lot of government money. We don't want yes. it. We don't want can you survive without it, though? Yes, we can. Yes. I am making sure that I know how to fix my own clothes, crochet my own blankets and washcloths. I'm going to make sure that I can take care of myself and my family for when the things that are happening in Egypt start happening here. If you're looking for small government and freedom, who is best placed to deliver that to you? Which politician? A conservative. How many of you, for show of hands if you don't mind, would say that that conservative is Sarah Palin? Around a third raise their hands. Not exactly a ringing endorsement, 
but the same message we heard again and again. You know, she's a good candidate. She may not be the best candidate, but she's a whole lot better than what we have in the government right now. Yeah.